Hi there, in this behavioral economics video, let's spend a few minutes thinking about choice architecture. Well, what does this mean? It's, it basically refers to the design of choices and how they are presented to people when they're making decisions. And it recognizes the idea from behavioral science that the way in which a choice is presented or the architecture of a choice can influence people's decisions. I've got some examples for you, but if you think about menus in a restaurant, the way items are listed and priced, the order in which people can choose off a menu can influence what uh, people eventually choose to, to buy. The placement of products in a supermarket can influence sales. If you place higher profit items at eye level or near the checkout, for example. And uh, as we'll see, default options become very, very important. So the default options that are presented on a form or online can influence people's choices. Are people opting in as default or opting out? So some examples of choice architecture, they surround us. It's a ubiquitous aspect of behavioral economics. If you think about uh, making donations to charity or fundraising platforms, they often display suggested donations about $10, $5, $50, $100. Now what you are presented with can often influence your choice. If you lift and raise the three donation amounts to let's say 20, 50 and 100, then you might nudge people's higher contributions. Uh, smaller plates of buffets uh, or already pre-packaged portions can subtly reduce food consumption and waste. The thinking here is that if you have a slightly smaller plate at a buffet, it gets filled more easily and therefore people on average uh, probably eat a little less. So the design or the choice architecture in restaurants, the placement of food, the order of food, somebody has to make those decisions and the architecture of choice is assumed to have an impact on the decisions we make. Thinking about financial economics, trying to encourage people to save more, impulse saving if you like, instead of impulse spending, so bank apps like the Acorns app rounds up purchases to the nearest dollar or to the nearest pound and deposits the difference into a savings account. So when you spend £75 on something, it automatically adds £5 to a dedicated high interest savings account. And in terms of energy conservation, things like pre-programming energy saving temperatures during off-peak hours, the Nest smart meter here is a good example. So often the pre-programmed approach using harnessing the benefits of uh, digital technology can act as a, a nudge to change people's energy consumption, but it's built around the idea of choice architecture. Now, Richard Thaler, Professor Thaler, who appeared in The Big Short, uh, won the Economics Nobel Prize for his groundbreaking research and work, particularly on choice architecture and its role in nudging behaviours. He's worked for a decade with Kath Stansin, and uh, together they argue for what's called the libertarian paternalism approach. And that's a concept that it supports influencing choices in ways that improve individual and social well-being, but whilst respecting the freedom of choice. So you try to nudge people in ways that don't deprive them of choices, but maybe just basically change the environment. Subtle changes in the environment in which choices are made. Now, it's important to uh, evaluate choice architecture, they are limited. This is a, particularly is a form of nudging. And I think it's probably true to say that nudges are often most effective for fairly simple, low stakes decisions. You know, whether you choose the salad or the sweet uh, at, a, at a buffet, or how to conserve energy, for example, these are fairly low stakes decisions that we often make quite frequently. They're not necessarily though, universally effective across cultures and demographics. So the choice architecture that might work in one society might be ineffective or even backfire in another. And critics have argued that nudging is a way of sometimes manipulating people into making a choice they wouldn't otherwise perhaps make. So this idea of libertarian paternalism, autonomy and free will is, is open to question. So for example, pre-selecting those tipping percentages, digital payment systems, uh, might pressure customers into tipping more than they intend. And nudging is a way of changing behaviour, getting people, for example, to recycle waste, but it doesn't necessarily address what you might argue are structural 
systematic issues like overproduction of non-recycled materials or inadequate waste manufacturing infrastructure. So nudging can have an impact at the margin, but we shouldn't be blind to the fact that fundamentally we need to perhaps to change the composition of products or invest in the infrastructure needed to, to recycle and reuse at scale. So there we go. I hope you found this short revision video useful on choice architecture, part of our series of videos on behavioral economics. Take care and see you soon.